All right, so I was getting ahead of myself earlier. Um, before we do the radial copy, I need to uh, actually define the tread pattern. <coughs> and that's what I have done with this sketch here. So we'll have a look at that. So what I did with this sketch was I kept the the entire uh, cross section sketch visible, so you can toggle visibility by highlighting the part and pressing spacebar. So I kept that one visible, and I started a new sketch for the tread pattern. And and I used a few construction lines so I've put a circle and turned that into a construction line at 50 uh, millimeters and then another one at 55 so that covers the um, you know the, the 55 mil total height of the tire <coughs> and uh, a couple of extra construction lines here to actually why have I used those I can't remember <laughs> but um, uh, there's a vertical construction line uh, through the center of the sketch so and I have used this time the symmetry constraint on all the points of the tread so you can see these symmetry lines here so that is symmetrical with that so basically it makes the tread pattern symmetrical and then um, because I've kept the sketch for the tire visible I can make sure that the base of these tread blocks are inside the tire profile um, so that when when you um, create the radial array of these uh, that you don't see anything sticking out through the wrong side of it so yeah and I've used to get these points to stick to the construction line circle I've used a coincident constraint and all of the angles here are set to 85 degrees just basically made made something that looks reasonably like a tread pattern you know as I say just have a go yourself and see what you come up with really so that's the second sketch and that's for the tread pattern and then what I did to that was create a pad from it. So if I if I just delete this pad, no, that's not a good idea actually. <laughs> so yeah, I just use this tool here, the um, pad a selected sketch. Um, so you just you select the sketch, click pad, and it will give you some options for distance. And it basically extrudes the sketch. Uh, about an axis, about its uh, normal axis. So if we have a look at that. That's created something like that, which was a bit disappointing because I was expecting it to create a solid for each of these, uh, each of these um, shapes. Uh, but it's a bit of a little glitch with FreeCAD. Maybe it will get sorted out soon. Hopefully. But <coughs> excuse me, if you're really desperate to get a pattern for all of these shapes, um, I think a workaround would be to create a separate sketch for each of the shapes and then pad each sketch separately. But I haven't really got time here, so I'm just going to do the demonstration with just the one, just the one shape. So back to the radial copy script and uh, on Salkson's. Salkson 2's blog, um, he's written some instructions here about how he used the script. So here's the, uh, let's get this so we can see it all. Here's the instructions. So 
if I delete if I delete that radio copy. Okay, so I select the pad. Now I'm going to do from part design dot script import radio then select the uh, select the object yeah done that our copy dot make radial so that's done and now so that we can view it we have to recomp uh, tell the view to recompute seconds and then okay that's done so if I zoom all the way out you can see it's added a radial array of tread exactly what we wanted to do um, so once that's done you can go into the radial array object look at the data and there are a couple of things here that you can tweak uh, the angle actually controls how many instances uh, how many shapes there are around the radius so if I change that to 10 and press enter it takes a while to calculate it which is a little bit frustrating oh there we go so that's done it so that's added more more tread uh, obviously if this was a real tire it would have a lot more but I'm not going to risk it because it's going to take ages to compute. And the other thing to uh, to bear in mind is the radius. Um, if I just turn on the revolution, yeah, there we go. Uh, let's change that. No, we don't need to change that. Um, if I had, yeah, like here, the blocks are actually sticking out through the back. I could adjust the radius so I could move them in this direction so that they're not sticking out basically so that's essentially it uh, if I had more time and if if FreeCAD somewhere down the line was a little bit more refined, which it will be. Um, the developers are doing an excellent job. They uh, they're releasing updates pretty much every day. So as I was doing this work, preparing for this tutorial, I think there were free updates. Um, we'd be able to add more tread pattern and get that looking a lot better. But I think you can see conceptually how it's possible. Uh, and the only other thing, if you really want to, if we go into the part workbench, highlight the revolution, and highlight the radial copy, whoops, sorry, hold down control, and click on it, so we've highlighted both of them, then we can do a boolean operation, do a union, and apply, and that will create another part which is the union of these two parts. It's just something you would do at a later date when you're happy with the shapes. So there we go. So now if I close that, this is now a fusion of the revolution uh, and the pad. So the actual the bold tire and this uh, this this pad, this radial array. So when I click on it, it highlights the whole object. Okay, that's about it. So yeah, in future um, tutorials, maybe I'll go into a little bit more depth. Um, actually, I'd like for you to leave comments 
and tell me what what you'd like me to to cover. Um, do you want me to go back over what I've done and cover it in more detail, or shall I move on and try and cover some more features of FreeCAD and create some more bike parts? Um, something like a stem, maybe use the part workbench and do some boolean operations. Um, yeah, just just let me know, really.